Sick of bad service, there's a billionaire who wants to help and he's going undercover to get it done. Jerry Harvey is a self-confessed risk taker. It's helped him build his successful business empire. But even he admits what you're about to see is one of the craziest things he's ever done. A stunt designed to expose poor service in his own stores. Our reporter James Thomas joins the retail king as you've never seen him before. That girl was terrible. She was? She was terrible, wasn't she? She wasn't real good at her job, did you think? This sales assistant really should have paid more attention to her customer. By the end of our story, she'll know why. What are you going to do if the service is genuinely bad? You're not going to do a Donald Trump and just sort of say, You're mate, fired. <laughs> no. You won't do that? No. Would my mother recognise me? She won't anymore. She will not know who you are. You okay under there? All good, Jerry? Mm hmm Great. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Hi, good to see you, sir. Jerry, how are you? Being Jerry Harvey is a little like being a movie star. Everyone knows him. Hi, Jerry. How are you going? OK, it's well and good for Jerry to be known at a day at the races, but we also know that he's the boss of some 160 retail stores, Harvey Norman. How does the boss know what's going on on the floor of his stores when everyone knows him, everyone behaves when he's around? He needs to be incognito. He needs a new identity. Well, that's all happening behind me. Want to look? Not yet. It'll be interesting to see what I look like. Australia's most recognisable retail identity is undergoing complete reconstruction. Is this the um, costume? Yeah. It is. Up the other it is an elaborate affair involving costumes, props and a new face. We're not cutting anything, we're just taking a, an impression of your face. Few artists transform people like Jason Baird from JMB FX Studios. It has to be believable to, to, to hit, like you know, yeah, without cameras and lights and post-production. The prosthetic specialist has worked with Hollywood's finest actors on The Matrix, Star Wars and Peter Pan. You're in my hands now, so just relax. Jason's challenge is to turn the billionaire boss of Harvey Norman into a nondescript everyday customer so that Jerry can effectively spy on his staff. So whenever I go into the store as me, then I never get what the real reaction is to a customer. I can't tell. It's important for me to be someone else. And so our hoax is born. Once disguised, Jerry will raid his stores undercover, a role he is clearly relishing. Is there anything we can do to disguise well, the voice? I, I think the voice thing might be all right, actually. Do you? Yeah. Once we're off. Well, once we've got this nose and chin on... Talk is cheap. There's only one way to find out if this will work. Jerry begins his facial transformation. Right. You sit back and relax, okay. and we'll get going. Slowly, we'll do this very gently. A mould of Jerry's face is used to fabricate a new nose and a new chin for Jerry. Now he must spend close to three hours getting his amended features fixed on. Look, I can give you my assurance. I, I, I'm not going to waste three or four days of my time doing something that's going to be a, you know, it's a, it's a joke. I mean, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it. Uh, and, and no one's going to know about it. It will be 100% genuine. This story could be a godsend if everything goes well and Jerry's staff are all angels. But what if they're not? This could be a public relations disaster. You've got to be honest, and, and, and I don't think the story is as good if you've got all this wonderful service and that sort of thing. Let me assure you, we can give bad service in Harvey Norman. It happens. And Jerry wants to catch this bad service red-handed, which is why he has now spent all up close to six hours in this makeup chair in an attempt to change his identity. The moment we've all been waiting for. Don't you want to see what he looks like? All right, Jerry, you ready? Yes. Open wide. Holy Moses! <laughs> 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 It is quite a change. Jerry Harvey has gone from this to this. In the Harvey Norman structure, who actually knows about this little stunt of ours? Well, me, my wife, full stop. All dressed up and somewhere to go. The executive chairman of Harvey Norman enters his own shop for the first time as a new man. How often would you get to uh, do something like this, do you think? 
I've never done it, and, I, and really, realistically, this will be a wonder, and, and this will be, I, I'll do it once, and I'll never do it again. How are you both today? Good, thank you. The assistant in the bedding section starts well enough with a nice hello, but it goes pear-shaped very quickly. Well, I don't know what I want, actually. The salesperson could make a suggestion, but instead she freezes. Jerry gives her one more golden opportunity to suggest a product. I'd like to wake up in the morning feeling a bit better than I do, you know? Yeah. More silence from the assistant. That girl was terrible. She was what? She was terrible. Little does she know that this is unfolding in front of the man who prides himself on having one of the greatest retail businesses in the world. I lived for Harvey Norman, you know, like I'd been in business for myself for 50 years and, and, and your reputation is very important to you and your reputation is gained by the quality of the people that you employ. Jerry has close to 20,000 employees. He acknowledges that it's impossible for everyone to be on the money all the time. But he is genuinely disappointed with his first undercover find. See, that girl really needs a lot of training. She's not good. You're disappointed? Yeah, I am. I am. A new section, a new employee. Oh, well, if we're interested, we'll come back one day. I was interested, but... Um, I've actually wanted to buy one. Yeah, well, they're all for sale. Again, Jerry's unimpressed. She wasn't very good either. Jerry has reached boiling point. Were he a real customer, he may never be back. Is the manager in? Nathan. The manager. Who's the manager? Nathan. Yeah. Do you want to grab me for you? No, no, it doesn't matter. Mr Harvey is seeing a very different Harvey Norman to the one he is used to when he saunters in as the boss. There's no problem then, I guarantee you, because everyone comes up and they all say hello, that's the customers, the staff come up and say hello, the guy that's running the shop comes up and says hello. There's never any problem there. En route to a new store, Jerry vents his frustrations. They don't engage with you and get you, you know, and, and find out a little bit about you or what you want and talk yep. to you about things. It was like standoffish. Maybe that's me, right? They've seen this silly old bloke and they think, oh, well, he's hard to engage with or they think I'm a joke or something. I don't know. But, but they, that's you, you never know who's walking into your shop. You just don't know. Case in point. Exactly. And just because you look old and dottery, um, you know, you could well be... In, well, I could have a billionaire. billionaire in my pocket. Please. I could be. <laughs> a disguised billionaire heads into another store. That's what you want, son. You do realise it is like that. Quick as a flash, this salesman takes Jerry's cue. The good thing with this one too, it's got an auto water uh, sensor level too, so if you're only doing a small load, it only uses as much water as it actually needs okay. to. Now this is music to Jerry's ears. You're a pretty knowledgeable young bloke on this sort of stuff. Yeah, oh, all right, that's what I've got to be. How did you go in there? Well, you know, the first salesman was very good and so was the second one. Plasma's the best, is it? Well, plasma's still very good. Um, it's not a case of which one's better than the other, it's just which one suits you better. Very smooth, and such a wealth of product knowledge. You'd think this guy knew it was the boss he was talking to. But when we returned a little later with full camera crew, Jerry was so well disguised, they wouldn't let us in. Hello, how are you? No, no, they were, they're all right. We want to see the manager. No, I'll get the manager. Is the manager in? Chaos. A strange old man with a TV crew. Staff hit the phones. Where's the manager? I'm one of the department managers. Well, mate, we just want to have a chat to you about your service. Yep. What's Do you happened? think it's good? I believe it is, yes. Mm. Do you think it's good, sir? I think your service is outstanding. It is. Yeah? That's yeah. pretty good. Oh, that's fantastic. Revealing his true identity, some of Jerry's staff are gobsmacked. Yeah, I didn't recognise him at all. <laughs> I never would have recognised him. That yeah. doesn't matter in here. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. That was unbelievable. Or believable. For Jerry, the stunt worked. His staff will be watching this story tonight and they'll get a simple message. The boss will go to any lengths in the pursuit of good service. So from my point of view, it's a never-ending vision. A dream to be able to give the best service in the country and, and, and you just keep striving it. You can't let your guard drop. And if you do, you never quite know 
Who's watching? You keep, you kept selling. I had to keep going, yeah. You had Just to in keep case. Sorry. Sorry. Just in case. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> He's great value, isn't he? That was James Thomas reporting. The producer of that story was Daniel Clark. And if you're like me and absolutely hopeless at doing a deal with those sales staff, well, tomorrow night, Jerry hits the stores again as the undercover billionaire, and he's going to show you how to haggle a good deal. So look out for that tomorrow.